You're listening to the Learn Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette and Richard Nongard. Build the confidence you need to work professionally as a hypnotist. Whether you're new to hypnosis or looking to sharpen your skills, join us live in Las Vegas in August of 2020. Learn more now at VegasHypnosisTraining.com. Here they are, Jason and Richard. Welcome back to the Learn Hypnosis Podcast. This is Jason Lynette, and I'm joined once again by my co-host, Richard Nongard. And as we're having these conversations leading up to our event, which you can get all the details over at VegasHypnosisTraining.com, one of the most common questions I get is, if I've gone to a hypnosis training, what do I call myself at the end of it? Am I a hypnotist? Am I a hypnotherapist? You know, what's the difference? You know, Jason, a lot of people call me off the thing about taking a hypnosis training class. And they say, when I'm done with the class, will I be a hypnotist or I'll be a hypnotherapist? And uh, which one is better? You know, that's a fantastic question. And it's one that I know you and I have had this dialogue many times over the years. And uh, I know that you've done a lot of work in terms of tracking the legislation of this profession. And as a preview for where we're going to go inside of this, we'll talk about the laws and the requirements around these titles and where that may vary. But as a preview, we're probably going to bring it on home to the dialogue about, well, what are the words your clients are actually looking for? But first, Richard, how about you take it from here in terms of what we should know about these different titles? So the ICBCH actually offers two titles to those who graduate from our class. First is a certified clinical hypnotherapist. Uh, That is offered to those who take our course who hold license in a medical or mental health profession. So, for example, a physician who takes our course, or like me, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, Uh, or if somebody's a licensed professional counselor, social worker, or other licensed individual. That title is not available to those who do not also hold a license as a mental health or medical professional. And sometimes people are really distressed by that. They think, well, I'm less than. The reason why we use a title for those who come from a different background, whether it's a person who enters hypnosis because they've been uh, in business or a person who's entering from a sales background or somebody who's entering from really any other background. I mean, we have people, I had a person who was a bartender take my class uh, not too long ago. Um, We use the title certified professional hypnotist. The reason we do this is because in certain states, the title therapist is a protected title. And I want to pause you there to really highlight exactly what Richard just said there. This is a conversation that has much more to do with the word therapist and really very little to do with the word hypnotist. Absolutely, absolutely. And and there are a number of states um, that regulate the term therapist. We want those who graduate from our program to actually use the title that is going to be most reflective of the work that they're actually doing. So even though I am a licensed mental health professional, you will find no references to me as Richard Nomyard, Certified Clinical Hypnotherapist. The reason why is I find it more accurate since I perform no therapy. Although I'm licensed, I offer no therapeutic services. In other words, you can't make an appointment with me for marriage and family therapy, even though I'm licensed as a marriage and family therapist. And the work that I'm doing is actually the work of a professional hypnotist. So I'm Richard Nongard, ICBCH certified professional hypnotist. Now, people believe, and I think it's a misbelief, that there's a level system that somehow a hypnotherapist is higher than a hypnotist. That couldn't be further from the truth. The hypnosis profession is different than therapy. There are some people who are therapists who do hypnosis. I used to be a therapist who did hypnosis also, but now I am a hypnotist who used to be a therapist. And I know that this is was it the thing where Prince changed his name to a symbol? You're the uh, the artist now formally. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but people new to the profession often believe that the work they're doing is the work of a hypnotherapist. Look, if I'm helping somebody with their uh, sports performance, I, I'm, they're not coming to me for any type of therapy. I'm not a hypnotherapist. I'm a hypnotist. If they're coming to me because to this point in their life, they've been broke, they've managed money poorly, and they would like to adopt a mindset of wealth, begin saving money and step into abundance. I'm not doing the work of a therapist. I'm doing the work of a professional hypnotist. If I'm having a person with pre-surgical 
preparation. I'm not doing the work of surgery. I'm not cutting anybody open. I'm not being a a, a, a physician. And if I'm helping them to uh, recover afterwards, I'm not a physical therapist. I'm a hypnotist who's coming alongside those other professions with my unique talents and skills to help them achieve their best. So it is far more accurate to represent yourself as a certified professional hypnotist. And so even if somebody is a therapist and also a hypnotist, I think it's limiting to refer to oneself as a hypnotherapist. Which tell me if you'd agree with, with this sort of paraphrase of what I think you just said there, uh, which is that from a therapeutic model is often the goal, which as the non-medical, non-licensed person, which is the majority of this profession, by sure. the way, the, the fact that I'm not looking to diagnose, I'm looking not looking to provide insight and meaning. Instead, my client is hiring me because there here is this specific challenge that they wish to resolve, and I'm helping them to resolve that issue on their own, perhaps like in a coaching environment, as well as I know you and I both agree on this, that we're working our best as the hypnotist when we're working not only as the practitioner, but also the educator to show the client how they can do the work for themselves. I think that the model for our role is that of an instructor or a teacher. I don't actually hypnotize people. We covered that in one of our previous podcasts. What I'm actually doing is helping people to become hypnotic. I'm sharing hypnosis with them. I'm sharing the trance space with them. And I am uh, I, I, I am in rapport with them or I'm in alignment with them and I'm doing something with them. I'm not doing something to them. Therapists are often doing something to a person. They're in some cases prescribing a medication. In other cases, they're you know flexing a body part. In other cases, they are uh, uh, dealing with psychological rigidity and trying to help somebody move from uh, an unacceptable place of performance to an adequate level of functioning. That's really what psychotherapy is all about. It's about moving somebody to an adequate level of functioning. Whereas in hypnosis, most of my clients come to me adequately functioning, but they want to move to their highest level of performance. It's a different type of client. Also, I think this is really important. The clients who are out there are looking for a professional hypnotist specifically because they don't want to see a therapist. I had a client call me. It was a 24-year-old client. He called me for a sexual performance issue. He said, I'm calling. Uh, I'd like an appointment with Richard the hypnotist. Uh, I'd like to see him for a sexual performance issue. Uh, and so I asked him when I was talking to him on the phone, uh, have you seen a physician uh, uh, to rule out any organic issues? He said, yes, I saw a urologist. The urologist told me it was all in my head, told me to see a psychologist and gave me his name and number. So I called that psychologist and the psychologist said, yes, I can help you. It'll take about 50 weeks of therapy on a weekly basis using the techniques of blah, blah, blah techniques, and uh, you'll be able to find a resolution. He said to me, look, uh, he said, um, the reason I called you is I don't have 50 weeks. He said, I'm actually getting married next month, and my wife and I are moving to Europe, and um, I'm 24 years old. I'm a, I, I'm a finishing up uh, law school. I'm doing some kind of fellowship. Uh, and then I'm launching my career with my new wife. He said, this thing needs to work today. And, uh, and so I'm calling a hypnotist because I don't want therapy. There's something in, inside of that story too, of uh, the, the, something you mentioned is just as a reference, the question of licensing, which we can take care of that easily, at least in the United States, there is no licensing program. And the same is true in Australia, the same is per, true in United Kingdom, as well as Canada. And this tends to be the normal for us that people, again, from the outside perspective, as they're first getting started in this have exactly what you mentioned, the uh, the idea of a caste system, that I begin as the hypnotist, then I graduate to the hypnotherapist, which, which no, you know, and there's a few states in the US that do have a registration process, which is as simple as, and I think this is a pretty decent idea in those cases where, you know, fill out these forms, you've done the style of training, pay this admin fee, now you're on file, which I'm okay with that. Right. But really, to, to mind read where I think a lot of people are coming into this, and I hear this from time to time that, well, I don't want to be confused with one of those stage people. I don't want to be confused with the comedy club guy who's the cluck like a chicken, bark like a dog type thing. And, I, and I'll, sh I'll share my take on this. And I know you 
in many ways had a you know significant beginning in this career also doing stage hypnosis that was my origin story as well and i know as of now neither of us are doing that specific style but i i'd share the people who go i don't want to be confused with the stage hypnotist here's a quick history lesson that there's a span of time where hypnosis basically disappeared and it was the stage entertainer, whether it was the vaudeville performer, whether it was the touring, you know, stage entertainer, that's where most people were interacting with this. And many of your clients, I can tell you, I ask every single client on the phone, do you have any experience with hypnosis? And just out of my curiosity, what was the thought process to reach out to me? And so many of them reference that they've seen the comedy show. And I love this as a nuance. And this is something that I think even for those of you in this community need to hear. Um, people are smart. They're able to make that discer discerning choice to go, okay, well, that was for entertainment, but I know there's this other aspect of it and that's what I'm looking for. So really recognize that this category, even if it's not your chosen path, which at one point for both Richard and I, it was ours. And now respectfully, it's not just because we've focused our efforts in other markets that there's really not this dirty word of the stage hypnotist that so many people will see something. They'll even see something in a movie, which is clearly a science fiction depiction. And they'll go, I know it's not like that, but can you do something like, and then fill in the blank. So they're looking to get away from that hypnotist perspective, which Quite honestly, that's what a lot of your clients are actually looking for. You know, one of the great business opportunities we have is to be a hypnotist. And the reason why it's a great business opportunity is there really aren't very many of us. And uh, and, and and folks who worry, oh, they're going to think I'm a stage hypnotist if I use the word hypnotist. Um, we're not we're not on the radar of people. Most people don't know what a hypnotist is. Most people have never seen a stage hypnosis show. That confusion doesn't exist for them. It's a it's it's a confusion that is in our own mind about what we, that's a projection onto them about what they think. The reality is a client doesn't know the difference between a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and a social worker, and they really don't know the difference between a hypnotist and a hypnotherapist and a stage hypnotist. All they know is they have a problem and they're looking for somebody who wants help, which brings us to our next point, Jason. They are not Googling stop smoking hypnotherapist. And guess what I just did is as soon as you set numbers, which by the way, for those that are curious, our upcoming event, which is August 2020 in Las Vegas, just before the HypnoThoughts Live Convention, the largest largest hypnosis conference in the entire world. The title that you'll get as a result of the training is Certified Professional Hypnotist. Though Richard referenced numbers, and I pulled up uh, a tool that I use sometimes where I can go inside of Google's listings and actually pull out the specific numbers of how many searches are going into Google for specific words. So here's um, numbers don't lie in this case. I've pulled up four specific words, basically two combinations. We're going to compare hypnotherapy to hypnosis, and we're going to compare hypnotist to hypnotherapist. And you may have already guessed as, uh, uh, as a lot of our leaning is clearly going in one direction. Let's start. Yeah. The numbers have been considered. You and I have been pulling up the same tool for years with the same results. And these are results as of today that you just pulled up. But when we did this a year ago, when we did this five years ago, when we did this 10 years ago, it was the same results. Actually, the numbers are even more impressive this time. And you and I did this about two months ago, the last time we did an event. So let's start with hypnosis to hypnotherapy. Uh, and let's go in reverse order. So the number of monthly searches for hypnotherapy in Google are uh, not to get too specific, let's round it off, 52,000. So there are 52,000 searches each month for the word hypnotherapy, at least in terms of this recent uh, analysis. That's hypnotherapy, 52,000. Uh, we're nearly three times the result with the word hypnosis. I've got 142,000 monthly searches on Google for the word hypnosis, which by the way, your business um, in Nevada is Nevada Hypnosis or Hypnosis yeah, Nevada? It's, just, it's not Nevada Hypnotherapy. Yeah. The same as I'm in Virginia, I'm Virginia Hypnosis. So the catchphrase is bow down to the gods of Google and use the terminology that your clients are looking for. Uh, for hypnotherapist to hypnotist, 
Uh, I've got for hypnotherapist, we'll round it off, 12,000 searches for hypnotherapist, and we're nearly two and a half times the volume for hypnotist. I've got uh, basically now 27,000 people are looking for hypnotist. So putting the numbers where they ought to be, can you now realize why I'm Jason Lynette? Welcome to Virginia Hypnosis. I'm your hypnotist. Again, to understand the words that your clients are looking for makes it so in our modern era, the devices in our pockets, the computers we use at home, people are searching based on the specific words that they use. And this is where a simple marketing principle is that confusing doesn't sell. So if I'm using the exact words that you're looking for, you're more likely to find me. So this really answers the question, I think, better than the theoretical approaches as to whether or not people perceive one word better than the other. No, use the words that they're looking for, and that's how they can find you. Absolutely. The numbers do not lie. That's takeaway number one. Takeaway number two is that if you want to avoid uh, confusion, especially if you're in a state where hypnosis has some regulations, you're going to use the word that clearly delineates the work that you do. That is the work of a professional hypnotist, not the work of a therapist. And also, again, um, because we're offering a unique service that maybe instead of a therapy or maybe alongside a therapy, we are clear to our clients what our role is when we use the title professional hypnotist. So I'm Dr. Richard Nongard, certified professional hypnotist. You're Jason Lynette, ICBCH certified professional hypnotist. And although I uh, could represent myself as a certified clinical hypnotherapist, and maybe if I was still doing, and year, years ago, I used to do hospital work as a therapist on staff at a hospital. Maybe in that environment, I would want to use the certified clinical hypnotherapist title. But then again, I'd be working with clients who are in medical crisis. I wouldn't be working with high-functioning clients. Uh, but I have, for many years now, preferred the title uh, certified professional hypnotist. It accurately represents the work that I do. It provides clarity in states where uh, the, the word therapist might be regulated. And the bottom line is it's what my clients, potential clients are actually looking for, and I want them to find me. And this is one of the benefits of our upcoming event, which again, details online at VegasHypnosisTraining.com, is that one of the resources that you are going to receive as part of this event, and this is one of the strengths of the ICBCH, we have one of the most recent and updated state law guides. So this is where the wonders of these United States, for those of us here in the USA, is that not every state has the same set of laws. So by example of this, in the state of Virginia, I could use whatever title I want. There's no limitation on that, but it changes if I go up to Maryland. It changes if I go down to, uh, to Tennessee, if I go down to uh, North Carolina. Really, the benefit, end of the story, as we've drilled it in, is that you can practically take the word hypnotist anywhere in the world, and people understand what that role is. That's what they're looking for, and that's exactly the service that you're going to provide them. This has been the Learn Hypnosis Podcast. Get certified as a professional hypnotist now at VegasHypnosisTraining.com.